Hey, what's everybody doing another video? Uh, I got a lot of positive feedback over on IG and just because it was on IG, I'm probably gonna post it as well on YouTube and do a longer YouTube version, I guess, uh, with some bits and chunks of other stuff. But uh, try to make this so I could chop it up in different formats uh, and help people. But I help people with framing and posing in the previous video. And this one, I'm going to try to help with uh, battle anatomy, even normal anatomy, try to help stuff like posture in your photos, and things like that. And hopefully this video will help you. So I always use Cougar. This is my main man. This is my go-to guy. It is a toy that I am very comfortable with and it makes me feel good. So I highly suggest you practice on a toy that makes you feel the same. That way you don't have to worry about things like, am I going to break it? Do I have to worry about this? You want to play with a toy that allows you to have the best excitement experience you can have, in my opinion. Now, I have chosen to use the open relax palms. So we're gonna talk about stuff like the walking anatomy and then battle anatomy. We'll jump into that after. Now, one of the really cool things that I like with Kuga is that uh, it gives you a lot of expressive range body-wise that you normally didn't think you would get. Now, see how I'm naturally doing this and I have to learn to most of the time express this, what I'm thinking while I do it. Now, from a certain angle, you can see that he's walking just fine, right? This is a walking pose. It looks just fine. Came out natural for me, but I know some people have difficulty doing it. This is one of those things where you kind of picture yourself. You're gonna take a picture of yourself and you're going to pretty much picture yourself walking, right? You wanna work on his legs. You wanna make sure you, if you walk with your right foot front, you wanna have your left hand out. That's the way you should naturally walk because a lot of people like to argue about this, but I'm gonna show you something. If you walk with your right arm forward and your left arm forward, this seems more like a getting ready to do something else as opposed to walking, as you can see here. This doesn't look right, and it damn sure doesn't feel right if you walk naturally. So keep this in mind, this is the wrong way to go about it. So that's why you should always alternate arm and leg. So if it's your left arm, it should be right leg. If it's right leg, you wanna be left arm. I mean, if it's uh, left leg, you wanna be right arm. You know what I mean. Now, stuff like fighting, it comes a little differently, especially when you're using more than one character. And you guys will have to excuse me because Riley's in the room and I may uh, get distracted by him. Now, let's say you are, in this case, because I don't have the closed fist out with me, you're gonna throw a slap. <laughs> let's say a slap, but not a punch. When you are throwing a punch, if it's not a sucker one and it's a well-placed, you've had some sort of training whatsoever, if your right arm is extended, your left leg should be out. If you want to throw it blindly, obviously you turn your head, but you always want to look in the direction of where you're going. Your form wants to be that of that flows fluently and voila. So let's say you were throwing a slap. This is what you can do. In this case, imagine it being a fist. Now, there's also things like throwing elbows, kicks, things like that. So let's say you were actually going up against an opponent or uh, who do I have? Let's use me. <laughs> if it's two people, and let's say he's trying to reach for the weapon. If Kuga's, oop, there we go. If Kuga's reaching for the weapon. Really, Riley? You're going, you're, you're going to, well, anyway. <laughs> if you're reaching for the weapon, and one is defending against said weapon, you reach for where the weapon is, you're going to pose him up. And again, I'm trying to learn how to explain this in words because it comes naturally to me after years of practice. So, toe is bent. I'm actually going to turn it down a little bit. So, <clears throat> let me frame this up for you. That back toe is bent. There's the expressive leg. And you see, like, he's actually eyesight with the weapon that he's looking for. So, that's the thing you want to do. Now, let's say me and I'm backing away from this said thing. My head wants to be turned at the guy. You want to you want to put an arm down, let's say like he's trying to stop it and you want to make it so that it seems like I'm either going to back up or not. Now, as you can see here, frame wise, this will look good. I'm trying to stop him from reaching for it. So as we previously taught in frame, when you get rid of the negative space, depending on how you want to angle it, we see what we have done. See, not a problem. So these are little things that you learn uh, tips and tricks. Now, uh, I'm gonna move on to the next one. I'm gonna take a pause as I just try to stop Riley from eating something he shouldn't. Hold on.
Now, let's say next up, you want to convey something like uh, feeling overwhelmed or being overwhelmed by a larger character. In this case, actually, we can still use me here. Uh, let's just take off this backpack, All right? I'm gonna pop this arm off. That way I can only have to worry about taking off one hand. So, backpack's off, and let's say I am going up against the alien or a predator, and you wanna feel that overwhelming sense of dread or you just not being able to uh, comprehend what's going on, whatever it is. Let's say I'm doing a, I'm back down, I'm holding a weapon, and he is above me. So let's use Razor Claw here. Razor Claw is a much larger character. It can show and convey a scene very well. And it can hunch over really good articulation wise. And I really like these. So as it looks down at me and it's directly over me, you always want to place the arm someplace like stopping the weapon like here. And another arm ready to lounge in that fatal second before the final blow. So let's say I'm trying to defend it or whatever it is. You also want to place your leg movement as if you were trying to crawl away. Little things like that go a long way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my other phone, take a picture from the side, and show you guys what that's like as I show you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get my phone ready, y'all. And you'll have to excuse me because I'm actually making up these videos as I go. I'm just hoping I help. Now, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick pic. And on this phone, you'll see what it looks like now see how that there's spacing in between in a better setting now what you'll do is you're gonna rotate one leg you're gonna place a little bit more forward place them a little further down maybe get that jaw open for a little bit of extra seam and then you want to extend at least one of these legs out to make it seem as if you're trying to move backwards. And there's little things like this that go a long way. You wanna place a little bit of debris or something there. These are the kind of things that you can do to convey these kind of scenes. Now, as far as action stuff goes, that's a whole different story. Now, with action, uh, let's use Gorgo. Let's say you wanna try something like swinging a blade or pointing a blade now. I mean, not Gorgo, sorry. You want to use Vorgus. Ooh, I really want that uh, Gorgo Aether Blade. Really having trouble finding that one. I don't know what it's about, but hey. Now, see how he's positioned holding the sword? This is just holding the sword, not attacking anything like that. When swinging a blade, you want to always rotate your body swinging in the direction that you want to be seen in. So that means leg forward. All right? leg protruding back to support your weight and your face wants to look towards where you want your blade to go and as you can see even in this frame as you see it here you can see where i'm going where i'm aiming and it's pretty much directly at you guys but as you can see the helmet always looks like it's looking at you these little details like this that can help you guys so hopefully it does um if i can think of anything else or in the comment section uh, feel free to add on what you would like to see more of as I try to do this more regularly. Hopefully this will help you guys. Now, for those of you who are on YouTube, I'm going to say this now, once you see this on YouTube, please go to the Instagram post, find it, write on it. It's a lot easier for me to check it because I will probably never ever check YouTube comments. So there is that. Now, I've said it for like the millionth time. This is an update for you guys who are new here. Don't check YouTube comments, but if you do have a question and you really want to answer it, you can go to my website, go to the contact page, and you can check out my email, and I'll respond when I can. I usually respond at least once or twice a week to a bunch of emails all at once. Hopefully, I get a chance to do that more often. Now, for those of you on IG, put it in the comments. I'll screenshot it, get back to it later. Hopefully, I can read your feedback when I can. Now, in the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you've been good, and I hope you found this informative. And as always, do good, be good, drink your water. Later.